Hi there, Robin here from Expert On, and today we're going to be doing a review on Alto's new TX208. This is their, well, their 8 inch TX series. Now it's the second series, and the biggest thing about the second series is no more open top. It's just full cover, everything all the way around. They've kept the most important part, which is the price tag. That's what it's all about. Uh, with this product, it's a good, reliable, dependable speaker. Now, if you're using it for uh, stage monitor, things like a rec room, or if you have a little sound studio, somewhere where you're going to be playing some music, but we're talking like, you know, garage band, uh, a dedicated space, that sort of thing. You want to have uh, some nice, affordable speakers, because that's really what you're looking at. Uh, when price is important, and you still want to maintain a certain degree of quality, the TX series is definitely the way to go. Uh, it's not crazy stupid loud. That's not why you're buying it. If you're looking for stupid loud, then go with the Alto TS uh, 3 Series. Now, that's a lot of power. But if you're looking for good performance out of a speaker that you're going to have right in front of you, let's say set up as a wedge, really nice way to go. Uh, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take a time to actually do a, an actual sound test on it, uh, see how it actually sounds compared to what we had before, and then we'll take it over to the table and we'll look at the back and check out all the overall features and I'll add my two cents in at that point. Anyways, all right, so we're ready for our sound demo portion of it. What we've got is we've got the speaker set up now because it's only a 300 watt speaker peak and that means 150 watts RMS, uh, remember it is D-class amplifier so we should get some really good sound, is we've got it set up at 16 feet. So I know traditionally we do a 24 to 34 foot, uh, sorry, 24 to 30 foot setup on our demos, but it's an eight inch speaker. So let's be nice to it. Uh, I've got it set up here. Now, of course we don't have it set up as a, as a wedge monitor on the floor, though it could have been done that way. We've got it actually set up here. Now, we're gonna use my phone. We're gonna use royalty free music, uh, courtesy of YouTube. And we're gonna plug this puppy in here. Now, I do have the gain set at 12 o'clock. We could go a little louder on it, but I, in this case, even though they say you can, we're going to leave it just, just a little bit more. There we go. And we'll rewind that. We'll hit play now. turn up any louder I did have it set at about one o'clock and I'll show you that at the table afterwards where we actually had it set then I backed it back down to 12 o'clock and I'm figuring if you're gonna use it as a monitor you're gonna want it sound as good as it possibly can so we don't have a want to have a lot of loose vibrations in it so I did find turning it up it did vibrate a little bit but remember when we're talking about price point which is really really important with the speaker uh, anything you buy besides this at that price is not going to sound anywhere near like this one here. So if you are looking for better, you're probably going to look at the Alto TS3 series uh, and spend a little bit more money for that. But if you're definitely looking for a garage band size application, this one here as a, as a monitor wedge in front of you, or if you just have a spare room and you want an extra speaker in it, that would definitely be the one to look at. So we'll bring it off to the table. We'll see what else we can see. All right, so here we are at the table with the 8-inch. The best part, the things I like about reviewing 8-inch speakers are is I get to sit down and do the review. I don't have to stand up over it. Now, full cover. Nice, solid material. Really, really well done. Uh, if I was to critique the front side here, it's going to be this sticker right here. Um, if you plan on keeping that sticker, you're going to have to put scotch tape on it. Uh, these things fall off constantly. So if I'm going to give Alto a, a critique on it is... Uh, a little bit better backing that sticks that on. But outside of that, we've got the name down at the bottom. We've got a little light that lights up. We've got our 8-inch driver. And we've got our 1-inch tweeter horn on top. Uh, tapered side edges, all molded plastic. And I'm sure they, they also have all that, that fiberglass sort of stuff embedded in there to keep it as tight as possible. It is a solid case. Uh, again, they, they do a lot to make sure this isn't uh, going to make a lot of noise for you. 
Um, here's that wedge side that I really like, and that's going to allow me to do this, right? So I can set that up like that. This is really what it's all about. Uh, if you're really, you know, if you're setting up a, a studio and you want to have some speakers play back everything you're working on, and you want to throw this up, let's say, up behind you or up in front of you, so this way you've got your monitor. I mean, these would be just like kick-ass monitors for playing off of uh, your computer. So, that being said, let's take a look at the backside. Now, when I was doing the live sound test at the end, I basically said I did have it set higher. I did have the volume originally up here, uh, and basically the limiter. So remember, there's a green light here for power, and above that, there's a clear light that is green when you're running, and people say, oh, it's already at, you know, signal limit. No, that's the green light tell you that it has a signal. Uh, when that light starts flashing red, then you've hit the limit. Now, what I find is that when you hit the limit on this thing and it starts really flashing red on you, not solid because that would be bad. Uh, when you're really starting to get up there, uh, and this only happens when you're really hitting the limit on it, uh, we get a little bit of vibration out of here. Now, if I was, you know, 16 feet away from it in the front, I wouldn't have heard that. But I was standing right behind it, so I'm thinking that maybe if I'm using it as a monitor, uh, I wouldn't want to push it more than 12 o'clock which was still really loud for a speaker that only has a sticker on the front that says 300 watts. And then you find out that it's, you know, they're really saying it's 150 watts continuous. But that's not the only reason why you're buying it. You're buying it because, you know, if this was like a stupidly five, six, seven hundred dollar speaker, you'd say, oh, no, it's not worth it. But for the price, and if you put it in the right place, it's a great speaker to buy. That's why they sell so many of these. Now, I'd probably get them in pairs if I was using it. Uh, I'd probably be happier with having two or three of these lined up in front of me if I was a singer or if I was playing guitar and I had to do vocals on top of that. Uh, just so this way I can move around and have that full sound in front of me. I mean, that'd probably be really cool to look at too, but that's, you know, not here nor there. Um, outside of that, uh, no fan on this model here because of the size. When they get into this size of power, uh, they just need to have some good ventilation and uh, I didn't see or hear a fan and I can actually see through the grill and see all the electronics inside and definitely I don't see a fan in there. Now for plugs, it's a XLR 3 pin for the input and for the link output. So if I was hooking up a second speaker, I could just easily plug them both one in after the other, set them at 12 o'clock and off to the races you go. Uh, outside of that, extremely nice, light, uh, you know, it's got enough weight that it's not going to move around on its own. Uh, again, like I said, the setup is so this way you can have it on its feet at the bottom. They do put, so this way you're not going to scuff it up, they do put these little dimples on it all around. So if it was sitting on its backside for transportation or whatever you plan on doing it, somebody needs to use it this way, I don't think so. Uh, unless you're just trying to fill a room with sound and you just want to have it whoosh, go out there. Uh, though I don't know how you plug anything into it. So I'm going to assume you're either setting it up like this or you're going to be using it like this. Now, just like I had it before, it does have a hole in the bottom for our speaker pole. It's a standard size, so not too worried about that. Uh, there is no screw on it, which is fine for what it is. Um, amazingly enough, there are speakers that cost... You know much more two three times as much and they don't put a screw on it so again if you're just sitting on the pole for play that's great maybe you're just using it at a service uh, i didn't even think of that until now uh if you're setting up speakers for a wedding service or you need something just to do announcements on or maybe you're going to have two of them just for a lecture there's a whole reason whole list of good reasons to buy a speaker like this if it makes sense right uh, especially if I'm thinking talk. If you're thinking just talk, the whole TX series is great for that. Um, so, I mean, there's the next check mark. Added something to the list. Now, um, for sound quality, when it comes to the overall unit, I didn't. No I did notice that depending on what we had plugged into it, uh, anything that created a lot of background noise, there was no filtering in here to get rid of that. It was really transferred right into the unit. So. Uh, definitely you want to plug something half decent into it so this way you get it out. Uh, so trial and error is uh, going to be there. But if it's any of the big brand names, generic stuff, you're probably going to have more distortion than brand name uh, mixers or, or products like that. 
Uh, make sure you have a good set of cables. Uh, doesn't mean spend a fortune on cables. Just means test your cables and see if they're working well. You know, because a, a cheap set of cables that work well is as good as an expensive set of cables that work well. So, anyways, there we go. So I think that's pretty much everything here. Uh, again, like I said, anything with vocals, just being able to talk. You know, if we're using for conferences, great. Do all that kind of stuff with it. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily be throwing a party with it. Of course, it's too small for that. Um, I would use it as a wedge monitor. That would definitely be a big plus. So, again. I'm Robin. You've been watching Expert Island. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you have subscribed, I want to say thank you very much for that. And if you haven't, now's the perfect time. Hit that subscribe button. Alrighty then. We'll see you next time. Bye now.